So, uh, my title is Pain and Peace Strategies for Pregnant and Postnatal Client, and I, I run Merrill Education. And uh, this, is, this is me. Uh, so, I uh, pregnancy, postnatal, pelvic health, pregnancy, postnatal, massage, remedial therapy. I'm a student of um, uh, Susan's and also a lecturer at NLSSM as well. Um, and my business is really kind of like women's business. We now moved into perimenopausal and the menopausal program called the Third Age and also um, a nutrition for the pregnant and the postnatal time. So I'm live and now just launched online academy with a global um, audience. So I think if we, as um, this gentleman here, Russell, was talking about, you know, to get the business online and to be able to serve people who can't be in front of you is so important. It's an absolute ball lake. It really, really is. It really, to get to grips with the technology and then really be able to um, manage people online, very difficult. But it's been incredibly, for me, it's just been like, wow, wow. I never realised that so many people wanted what I had but just couldn't come to a course, even in England. So it's been quite incredible. So um, just before I start, you video videoing this. Yeah, I saw you posting something on the Facebook about women wearing heels. It was like, oh my God, look what's happening to you if you're wearing heels. And I just, I just want to say, I just want to say for the record, you know what, I've been wearing these since I was like 15. It's not going to end any day soon. So one more post like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unfriend you. Don't <laughs> So those of you who are working, you're not sure. Them, you're not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't turn them down if they came to me. Yeah. Them, not okay. So, um, so it's not actually so many of you. So maybe I just address this as maybe people don't know. People are not working that part of this. Okay. So when we um, talk about what the you know the, the potential for pain for the pregnant and the postnatal client, I love it because I think. Like you, you. Some of you think this is a difficult client base. Man, it's the easiest client base in terms of postural alignment and then the potential for pain and dysfunction. Ah, oh, it's a gift. These girls are like a walking advert for upper and lower cross syndrome. The lady in the very centre. That's one of my clients. And uh, you know, this is 17 weeks postnatal, but she could easily be about. Uh, four or five months pregnant, couldn't she? And look at that. If your clients presented to you as clearly as that, you'd be going, yes, awesome. We know instantly what's going on there. We definitely know where she's going to have all of her pain issues. For me, it's an app. this is a piece of cake, these girls. Simple, simple, simple. We've got what's happened to them during pregnancy um, and then in, and remains in the postnatal <coughs> period and the vibration of, of pregnancy staying with them. You know, this whole, this whole thing about the, the six-week check and then you're not postnatal anymore. I would, I would argue respectfully that, man, once you've had a baby, you're always postnatal. That, that, can, that, can, change, uh, that can create changes, both uh, physical and psychological, that last you a lifetime. Many women, you know, and after they've had a baby, they go into Mark II. They are never the same again. So the whole, pro the whole um, 
concept of getting your pre-baby body back you know, is a little slice of BS because really it's just like, just draw the line there man, just draw the line there and move into the wonder of your Mark II or maybe three body as opposed to sort of harking back to actually something that probably uh, will never, even if many people look the same, they never feel the same again. Does anybody who's had a baby, in, um, even if it's 20 years ago, do you uh, concur? No. Uh, no. No. You don't feel... I feel better. You feel better? Yeah. Do you feel... Oh, I'm not saying that you can't feel better, but have you got the same body as before you've ever had a baby? Well, no. No. Every, you know, something has altered. Do you want that internally or externally? Everything. Intrinsically. Well, yeah, yeah. Your vagina, okay, your pelvic floor, your, your abdominal muscle <coughs> tone, your capacity to transfer load through your core, so, you know, the few sneezy peas or the fear of the trampoline, etc. You are not... You are not the same. Assemblers, right? piles, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Oversharing, oversharing. <laughs> so, um, okay, and then, so we're going to go deep, we're going to go deeper with this afterwards. But then look into uh, then the, mom, the life of a mom. So the first, uh, I don't know, six, say if you do six months of breastfeeding, what are you doing? You know, as Alan was saying, you're sitting. Sitting's the new smoking. I was saying to you last night, I don't know why people go on of everybody sitting. All these um, fit pros posting, sitting is the new smoking. If everybody was getting up and at their stand-up desk and going for their power walks for two hours a day, we'd have no customers. So we better be glad for the people that sit on their tuchus all day. Because we would not have people to serve if they were all wonderfully moving all day long. And I stand at my desk and everything is wonderful. And my alignment is awesome. We wouldn't have anybody to serve. So then think about what the moms are doing, and and you know this this picture here of the oh I need to use my pointer yeah I'm professional. So this um um a picture here of the woman uh, you know standing holding the baby. You know many women get into this position. I don't I mean I do teach a lot of bit of pros, so I don't see many women actually like that pregnant because mostly I'm working with people who move and keep moving. But, oh my word, you know, the other day I actually saw one of these. And I was quite shocked. <laughs> because I was like thinking, what have you been doing to yourself? And obviously she was just, and she was quite, you know, overweight and deconditioned, I could see that. But yeah, she had just not been doing any exercises. And she was walking completely in like the frontal plane. And it was, it was quite interesting to observe. And then we've got this thing going on here. Right, so this baby, if it's brand new, this, this, she said, when I was going to use this baby, uh, please tell people that's not my baby. So this is like my, my baby doll that I bought from Argos called Rhea. She did have a brother called Rio as well. Anyway, so that's so Argos, isn't it? And um, this, um, uh, so yeah, so this Rhea doesn't weigh anything, but a real baby, you know, even like a very small one, is 5, 6 kg. Then these buggers, oh my gosh, how have you those? 10k upwards. Mm -hmm. Now, this woman, quite possibly, um, she is actually postnatal, but quite possibly, you, you're what? This is leaving the hospital. So if we, if you'd had a major operation, just completely come out of the headspace of being pr uh, pregnant or postnatal, you came out of the hospital, and um, uh, they said, right, so uh, it's three days after birth. Let's start your gym program. So let's start your, your, your starting weight for some exercise. Let's do some kettlebell kind of swings, picking the car seat up. And we'll start with like a 15 kg kettlebell. You would be going, this person's bonkers. I've just had a baby. But that's what they're doing. I mean, they are not swinging the car seats. But <laughs> you get where I'm going. OK. So I really, I was quite glad to do this because um, <coughs> I had to then think about what I use for my weapons of choice in, de in terms of dealing with, with pain with these clients. And um, so, as I said, I, you know, I am a remedial therapist and a massage therapist. So absolutely, 100%, we are touching people <coughs> skin to skin. Okay. My second um, a weapon of choice 
is this stuff, the myofascial lines. I'm a great fan of Thomas Myers. And this informs my map of the world and informs my map of the world in terms of the exercise prescription. This is a client of mine, Laurel, working with the Viper. So all the time, I'm very much wanting to, so using also movement as a, 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 as a antidote to pain. I'm using movement and using integrated movement linked to the breath always. So here we have the breath. And again, when I'm thinking about pain and stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system, absolutely. I've got, I mean, talking about the breath is actually one of my first number one jobs with uh, these clients, uh, the pregnant and most specifically the postnatal client. I'll come to why in a second. And then I'm a great fan of uh, um, heat. But now I'm like thinking, Ooh, maybe I'll make, <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm putting my thermal stones around people's upper back, you know? Oh, I'm going to make you fat. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking about that now. I'm thinking, oh, gosh. But uh, I'm a great fan of heat, vasodilation, and just generally the, the, um, the capacity to just uh, take people down, you know, literally down regulate people, which many, I feel, Definitely uh, postnatals, they most certainly need down regulating. They've got a busy life. Uh, I'm very, very into the instrument uh, assisted massage, and I use this a lot in, with the pregnant and postnatal clients, and, uh, because we've got really quick work for pain, pain receptors, really quick work for superficial connective tissue, and um, I, I love the way that we get results from this so, so quickly, and for many, and you can work through clothes. Uh, I'm using uh, METs like um, one second PIR, so obviously in biomechanics we are using a longer um, um, contraction. For me, especially working with the pregnant clients, I don't want people holding their breasts or the potential for valve salva. And so I'm just using a one second contraction <coughs> and guess what? It seems to work. It seems to work. No, it doesn't seem to work, it does work. So, um, and then, for, uh, and, and thanks to the education line I have at um, NLSSM, I'm very much using STR, soft tissue release. We had the transverse version today, uh, etc. cetera. Um, loaded movement training. I'm really very passionate about the use of this, uh, the vibe of, and then ischemic strategies. <coughs> I'm also throwing in a bit of acupressure and um, and, uh, and I was saying to Martin last night, this one here. Okay, so you don't think this has got anything to do with pain? You don't think food has got anything to do with pain? You need to have a really big conversation. So instead of it just being about pain, when I'm creating a wellness protocol for the pregnant and the postnatal client, for me, it's everything. And then also we need to talk about your, we need to do a little life laundry. So who was I speaking to last night about doing housework and women just trying to keep all these plates in the air. You know, for the postnatal client, when we're creating that wellness program, oh, we got to talk about who's helping you. You've got a job, you're a mom. Have you got to be, then, you know, have you got to do housework job? And then have you got to do the going out the house to work job? Well, at some point, somebody's got to help you here. There's three jobs. Most people, men, only have one job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> the men right, okay, right. So as, so as I said, um, a very multidisciplinary um, a multidisciplinary uh, approach to pain management, but we've got to just talk wellness. So what's happened? What, what's going on with a pregnant client? you know, that causes the pain issues. So the endocrinology, hormonal changes, and I know that if you only know one thing about pregnant and postnatal people, uh, it's like relaxing, relaxing, they've got this relaxing in them and they're all good for nothing then, they're completely unstable, blah, 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 it's really, really not true. Uh, and for very few people it is, but it's generally not true. Most of them are so biomechanically deranged uh, that um, uh, they actually need a whole load of release 
uh, strategies. There are there many uh, in many situations. They're not long, not short. As I said, we are for a long cross syndrome. They actually need a lot of releasing. But anyway, so the endocrinology and not being afraid of that because it's allowing and facilitating the pregnancy. Nothing happens unless we have those hormonal changes. But there's a definite set, uh, change in the autocenter of in the center of mass. And then there's a change in gait, and depending on how deconditioned people are, then you see people sort of walking with a knee verted foot, a widened stance, and then they start rolling about in the frontal plane kind of thing. Okay, and where that leaves them in the postnatal period almost definitely needs big attention. Uh, there's a dis decrease, uh, uh, low transfer, I'm going to talk about this in the postnatal period, but the stretching of the abdominal wall here after that baby is removed, and then we have all those stretched tissues across the abdominal wall, means that they're not getting that connection. That whole core cylinder um, is a... Oh yeah, so if we think about... Um, can you see I can manage perfectly well in these shoes? You look great, Jenny. I don't know what gets into you. <laughs> <laughs> don't let the girls down, Rachel. Challenge it from around the world. Uh, I can't run around the park, absolutely. But before I did this, I was a singer, right? And we, and you would wear high shoes for, and dance and move all night long. It's, I think it's how much money you spend on the shoes. But obviously, yes, my uterus is not in an optimal position. Or blah, 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 yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. Right, okay. So here we have the diaphragm. <laughs> And here we have the abdominal wall, and here we have the pelvic floor, and here we have, you know, like thorough lumbar fascia, and the lumbar multifidus, etc., etc. And here some people, uh, the traditional thing, of, uh, the traditional definition of the core is here, this is CBA. Okay, right. So, after you've had that baby, so first of all, you're, you're pregnant, especially towards the end of the pregnant, there's a change in what's happening at your diaphragm, your capacity to breathe, yes? Then, obviously, you're growing your baby, your abdominal wall gets a massive stretch, yes? Then, you've had the baby come out of that pelvic floor. Okay, so in case, guys, okay, this is like the pelvic floor. <laughs> and um, this here, look at you, uh, this here is the vagina, okay? <laughs> okay? And... You, we all know the size of baby's head. <laughs> so baby's head comes out of there. Problem, huh? It's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just yeah, just basic maths here. Basic maths. Thanks, then uh, basic maths. <laughs> and then here uh, you maybe had um, a C-section. So we've got a cut here to this synergistic unit potentially. And then we've got. The fact that most people, when they're training pregnant women, don't kind of think they need to do dead, deadlift. Crazy. Okay. When she's going to come out and pick up the baby and that car seat, that 15, 20 kg low, blah, blah, blah. And they're not sort of training the backside in a purposeful way. Okay. So, yes. So, a decreased load transfer. So, afterwards, yes. So, we all know, you know, if we just do normal fitness for normal people, that... <coughs> For load to be for optimal movement, we, this unit here needs to be working all four components. And after birth, that there is not working. So our first job is sorting out the client's breathing and then sorting out uh, her her connectivity and getting this to sequence optimally. So as we exhale, diaphragm elevates and pelvic floor activates and tensions. Abdominal wall should activate. And here, these, uh, these muscles and fascia and connective tissue all should be activating. Okay, for many women in the postnatal period, that then doesn't work. So we need to retrain them. We need to literally re help the car to repattern them. Okay, and then both global and local my, uh, uh, musculoskeletal, myofascial and connective tissue and neural issues. One of the big issues, pain issues that the postnatal client has um, is issues with the pudendal nerve, which is a nerve serving the pelvic floor and the um, and the orifices, 
And when that, that during birthing can get crushed and damaged, and then people end up with conditions such as pudendal neuralgia, which you know renders many people unable even to sit. Okay, so let's just, so those are the potential for pain issues, the upper and lower cross syndrome. And as I said, you know, for me, the pregnant clients are an absolute gift. You literally stand next to them and just palpate these hot spots coming up, and it's just it's just awesome. And when it's a client that doesn't really <coughs> know you, it's just amazing. They think you're like, oh, how did you know that was hurting? And I was like thinking, oh, you've come in walking like this. I, I got it, you know? I, I think I've got it. Okay, so then the postnatal uh, pain and dysfunction issues. Right, so this is maybe then a, a, a leap for those of you with no postnatal um uh, or pregnancy education. Well, what we've got is a series of issues here. So we've got the vibration of that pregnancy posture still remaining in the postnatal period. So we've got the upper and lower cross syndrome, we've got really uh, um, you know, tight, uh, sort of, you know, I mean, definitely rectus femoris with quads into the hips, we've got down, a lockdown bicep. Um, anterior delt, pectorals from the feeding, we've got the forward head posture, we've got the increased lower, lumbar lordosis, we've got a four foot stance, and actually, let's actually, if you just do, give me a second, and I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put them back on. Uh, so, if we just all stand for a second. Okay, so... Um, we are body workers, so we can, we can hear our bodies really well. And I just want you to stand in, in, in a neutral stance and just listen to your body. And I'm hoping that we, as people that help people with pain, have a quiet body. Have we got quiet bodies? Not much going on. So first of all, I want you to just widen your stance and then have an inverted foot. Okay? And then... Just relax, because then you need to feel what happens to your pelvis. Do you then sink into an anterior tilted pelvis? Mm -hmm. Okay, so hold that for a second. Then, as your feet are inverted, I want you to put your weight onto the, like the balls of your feet and your, your toes, so a four foot stance, and, and go forward enough to make your toes then start to grip. Okay, so we've got anterior tilted pelvis, inverted feet, and a four foot stance that makes your toes grip. Okay, let's just add a little bit of forward head posture. It's looking good. Oh, so keep the head, don't drop your head, just drop it forward. Okay, nice. Now, listen. Listen to what's grumbling and just shout out what's grumbling. No back, neck, yeah. tibialis anterior, quads, yeah. Thoracic knees. Okay, come back to quiet. And everybody went, ooh. Yeah. Okay, and take a seat. Right. So if we can think of that and somebody just coming off the sofa, just off the sofa, and they're desperate. You you've seen all the rubbish, we don't even need to go into all of this that's going on in the media about um, uh, you know women wanting to lose their baby weight, etc. etc. And going to extreme conditions. So they're coming into the gym wanting to do work that actually uh, uh, physiologically, biomechanically, intrinsically, extrinsically, they are not fit to do. Absolutely. You come in like this, you are not fit to be loaded. And one of the things that's missing in our world of <coughs> exercise prescription for this population is an undoing, a period of restoration, of optimal alignment that is fit for loading. Instead, what we've got is kind of like, yeah, let's just drop them into the bee sting, uh, and, and, and just as Alan was saying, cortisol is damned high already. Uh, high for pregnancy, high for birthing, that's trauma. High in the postnatal period because these ladies aren't sleeping. Oh, and what should we do? Let's just get you in the gym, let's do a really long session, let's kill some calories, let's get you jumping and peeing at the same time, etc. <laughs> so, We've got those, uh, those biomechanical um, uh, changes that are still existing into the, um, into the postnatal period. And then what we end up with also for many women is issues here. So I talked about the breathing before, and that's off. 
that people aren't checking that that, uh, that getting this right, for me, this is job number one. There is not a weight, there is not a squat, there is not a lunge to be had until you can <coughs> fire up this intrinsic system. Okay, then people still have issues with their joints, sacroiliac joint pain, and hip symphysis pubis pain, their pelvic girdle pain, and, and here, in terms of soft tissue, um, uh, uh, there's a disconnection caused by uh, the uh, C-section uh, procedure, and again, this has to be addressed, are you connected? So we know that TVA activation is a synergist for pelvic floor, and so if a woman cannot activate TVA, and you haven't checked, it means that you know, we are really building our exercise prescription on a poor foundation. And then we talk about, and actually there's, there's potential for, um, disruption in the signal of this intrinsic system because of scar tissue that builds up on various levels, visceral scar tissue, and then uh, on the um, abdominal <coughs> wall. And this can be a huge problem. So we, uh, we laughingly talk about the Food Food Fun Club which is a six week pelvic floor program. You know, we get the women who come in with the sneezy peas, and in six weeks, we, uh, we, we get rid of them generally. Okay, so this program was born out of necessity. After I had a hysterectomy and, and two abdominal operations in one year, um, my scar tissue buildup was so incredible that I had virtually no TVA activation. And you know, uh, and and was had urinary incontinence. And one of the things that I was doing was the Kegels, you know, very static, <coughs> moving exercise, which really didn't prepare me for the activities of daily life. And then you know, I was uh, still running, and I wanted to run. And so, ten months after the operation, I went to run, and um, you know, and peed my shoes. Not kind of like like the stupid adverts. Oops. It was like whoosh, gone. So you know, and and again, following the advice of the physios and the clinicians who say, oh, you know, you need to do Kegels, and you need to do that. I'm going against everything that was instinctive to me about the pelvic floor and its relationship with the rest of the body. But we'll come to this in a sec. Anyway, so we have these uh, just the uh, the postural issues, which we can visually <coughs> see, but then. We need to check this. So you're working with a postnatal client. Well, if she cannot transfer load because of this here, rectus diastasis, this is the two bellies of the abdominal wall uh, staying um, remaining apart, and that midline, the midline tissues, the linear alba, not being able to withstand intra-abdominal pressure and not being able to transfer load. And so if she cannot transfer load through her core, then that's, that, this has a knock-on effect on potential, as potential uh, causing pain here at the sacroiliac joints and keeping the symphysis pubis uh, dysfunction alive. And so when we're now looking at the potential for pain for the postnatal client, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff going on uh, deeper than just these postural distortions that might be driving uh, the, the pain that she, you know, the back pain, the pain here at the symphysis pubis, the pain here at the sacroiliac <coughs> joint, and obviously we know that the potential for knee pain, ankle pain, and going up the chain as well. Okay, so as I said, so this, I, I so postnatal pain, it's, uh, it's, it's not just about the connective tissue, so if we think of so uh, Alan was saying you know, about the sitting, the sitting. Well, okay, so you have, you have this, you have the erectus diastasis, and you've been sitting down for an Adelaide to come in who, had, who was sitting at the bedside of a very ill child for about six months with that diastasis and sleeping in the chair. So what happens then? The viscera is then in that poor posture. She's obviously very depressed, the child is ill, Okay, and so then the viscera is pressing against the abdominal wall. She came in at one year postnatal with kind of like the baby like this, even when she's standing up. I don't know what's wrong with me. What? Why won't this go away? And so taking a really deep history of that woman and finding out that she's as exact straight after birth, <coughs> she was sat at the child's 
bed, bedside, morning, noon, and night, sleeping in the chair, like this. Um, so helping, so on a, on what, well, there's an emotional component to, to this. Nobody who's full of joy in life kind of hangs out like this, do they? So again, us as trainers putting on our big girls' panties and having conversations about, with our clients about their emotional states is really important. And that, you know that belly thing? Well, you stand like this. Have you realized you stand like this? That's a huge one. Because actually, maybe she hasn't. Um, and then uh, the pressure. So when you <coughs> have, um, when this is going on, then we can't manage pressure. And if you can't manage pressure in your in 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 the call, then there's a potential for this lovely thing. And I was being kind to you today because I actually have some real photographs of this. But I thought I'd be kind and just show you a nice sketch version. So this is a, a uterine prolapse, and as you can see. Of those who aren't in the in the conoscenti, your uterus usually isn't there hanging outside of your body. It's usually up here, and so there's a um, a possibility <coughs> of then organ prolapse. And so it can be bladder, uterus, vagina, rectum. Those organs, your viscera, coming out of of place, and then. At, you know, it seems like you've got away easy, but all you end up is having to use these every time it's a sports day. But still, this is major dysfunction, and it's like you shouldn't be putting up with it at all. Every woman should be able to run, sneeze, cough, jump, play volleyball, play netball, without the fear of all oh, having to pop one of these in. And many women. That's just the way that rolls after they've had babies, and they think it's okay. It really isn't at all on any level. I think had babies or not, I think, I had babies or not. I think it's, it's a key point. I know quite a few of you didn't raise your hand when you talked about whether they work with pre or postnatal. Post Even if you don't, if you work with females, chances are um, there's a high chance they'll have some form of incontinence. Mm. Chances are. So this this type of stuff is still is still and say, important 50, to be aware of. Fifty percent for prolapse, definitely into perimenopause to menopause. So the other time when this all of this starts to trouble women again, if any of you are training, you know the the plus fifties, then again all of this stuff is an issue. As the estrogen starts to leave the system, and then the connective tissue really starts to lose integrity. Okay, and then another source of postnatal pain is things like the weakening of the abdominal wall, then leading to, well, increasing the potential for um, issues like, um, what was that? Uh, Pernius. Pernius. Okay. Okay, so, who are? So here is a, a, a model of, this is a model from Diane Lee, and she talks about, you know, there's a neural component to this um, uh, dysfunction, a visceral, a myofascial, an articular, and then also emotional, I would add to this, and nutritional. So uh, I, I had a good thing about my screening uh, system, and uh, uh, a big one is, how are you? And you ask a woman who's just had a baby, how are you? <coughs> okay, that could take a while. But either way, that's such a valuable thing, you're completely underrated. Um, listen first, speak later. And then I have a client led sentient postural assessment. And then when I first say, people say, what do you, what, what do you mean? And I go, like, she has a, pic, a picture of a woman on the front, at the side, and the back. Mark there where you have pain and discomfort, madam. Okay, I know it seems like kind of basic, you know, um, uh, as opposed to really, really screening. And please forgive me, Martin. And please forgive me, Rachel. Uh, but for me, you know, women are uh, coming, postnatal clients coming in for, for sessions or therapy, they're probably exhausted. They, you know, it's just marked on that piece of paper where I can help you. And obviously, I'm not just thinking when she marks you know, there, that it is just about there. I just want her to show me what the issue is. Then, for me, 
and palpation is such a huge thing. My first, did anybody have a baby quite recently? No? Three years. No, yeah, come, come. Yeah, would you be my lady? <coughs> How do you feel? How are you? I feel good. All right. <laughs> <Love> you, <laughs> and you were in the steam and sauna yesterday. Okay, so for me, um, oh, what's your little bit? Anna. Oh, yes. And a little. Oh, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook. Oh, yeah. We're friends, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Anna is um, <laughs> Anna is my um, so Anna is a lady. She comes in three years postnatal. Well, you know what? Like, um, now who was it that made this hug? Russell. Russell did the hug. Yeah. So one of the key things that I'm um, uh, as uh, working with this client population is that I don't stand away from Anna and say, right. So what you? How's your pelvic floor? How's your this? How's your, you know? It's just like, oh my God, Anna, what have you been through? You know, how was the birth? You know, I'm standing, <coughs> I'm, I'm standing side by side with my sister. I know your pain. Oh my God, these kids are killers, aren't they? Oh my God, are you sleeping? It must, it must be dreadful. Have you got a cleaner yet? You've got to get cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the, so I'm then going to. Uh, after you know we've, we've, we've connected, I want to put my hands on them. I want to put my hands on them. So I uh, so let's do a little bit of work. So instantly I don't even need to do that much work, and I can instantly see Wiggy's scapula, which means she's definitely got something. She'll have something going on about rhomboids and levator scapulae, won't she? Yes. So um, let's just have a little palpate there, and then oh, actually if you look at your yeah, Anna, so you, you can see her face. So I will just sort of go in there. Yeah, I've a few bits and pieces. So I'll be the kind, you be, I'll be like we're doing it real. Yeah. So and Anna, what have we got here? So I'm going to levator scapulae now. What we got yeah, here? Yeah. It's tight yeah, it's a bit tight there. Okay. So if levator scapulae is an issue, subocipitus, and under here, Anna. Not as bad as the first one. Not as bad as the first one. Okay. Any tender spots? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Now I can see. Um, oh, I'm just going to check a piriformis because I, although I know it looks pretty well aligned now and pretty fit, she could have been, she could have been like this, okay? Which means inverted foot, shortened a piriformis. So then I'll just go into the glutes and just have a little palpate. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then anterior tilted pelvis from that to uh, <coughs> carry the bump. bump. What short last rib to iliac crest? QL. Yeah. So I'll go into QL. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then just bring your head down a little. So forward head posture. Probably platysma is like a, a bit locked up. And just take your head up. And just tell me if you've been any restriction. Yeah. 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 Great work. Oh, okay. Right, Anna. Now, if I've done all of that to Anna, do you think that she will not, at the very lately, sign up for some therapy, and the, and then that then progresses to exercise? But for me, and then, um, yeah. So I would observe a static and a, a, a static posture, and then in locomotion, I'm listening. I'm listening to her. You know, encouraging her to talk through how she feels. And then I would be like, right, Anna, so I know that you came in here, you're going, I've got to lose my baby weight, I've got to have a ship this way, um, I feel weird, blah, 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 blah. And I'm listening, yeah, yeah. But I would say, Anna, let's do some therapy first, man. You are in no fit position to now go to yourself. You've done an amazing job <coughs> making a baby. You are a baby maker. You have superpowers. <laughs> You know what you deserve now? Some therapy, some me time, some wonderful releasing. And, and I'm saying this to you. Yes, yeah, I'm not, telling you. I'm absolutely. I just want to give you my money. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I am. I I'm looking at her. I'm going. Okay. In, it, it, real, if I was me and her, all of that girl, you need some therapy. I'm not doing any exercise with you at all. We are. Let's. We're gonna bring you back to life. 
How do you feel? What, out of one to ten, what number are you at in terms of vitality? I'm on it. Think about six months after you had your baby. What number are you on? One to ten. Oh, nice. How just, I'm feeling? Yeah. Just all over the place. Yeah. Maybe about a four. A four. Four is four. She's in the land of let's do therapy. Four isn't in the land of let's go hard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to be my client? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right. So, uh, lovely listening and just helping bringing Anna on board, actually. So, can you see that my assessment, the whole, oh, you know, I'm in the gang of, oh, I palpate, <coughs> I palpate, rather than scream. Because for me, this is, um, for me, I've done my job at helping the client to identify um, that we need some therapeutic, some salt tissue, some intrinsic and extrinsic uh, biomechanical intervention rather than. I'm about to sign up and I gave birth 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to empower our Anna through education. Just because your baby came out of there doesn't mean to say that women know about this stuff at all. This stuff was about sex, ha ha he he stuff. <laughs> they don't know that about when things have gone bad. <coughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't know. They don't know. So <coughs> I need Anna to be totally schooled up on this stuff and the belly stuff and the breathing stuff and why she's going to start downloading a meditation app and you're going to work on the breathing and you're going to get that cleaner. I'm on a mission to make every woman get a cleaner. If you could post that for my husband, that would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. And then I give Anna uh, clear direction and homework. I support, but also, also I pass it back to her. You're accountable to yourself. Okay, don't waste your money. Follow through. Okay, so I, I copied this off your thing with your post this morning. So I, um, I'm doing this, I'm doing this with my hands, basically. And here, then, I'm then adding to that, uh, the obviously, pregnancy-related questions. How, what happened during your birth? Then the postnatal stuff, lifestyle, <coughs> I don't know about her life. I need to know about her pelvic health. You've got to tell me stuff about down there stuff. Because the down there stuff, if not, if we don't deal with it, it's going to cause pain. Okay, and then we're going to talk nutrition. So for me, you know, I was, I was saying I, I started off as, uh, as a food biochemist, and now my work now is going back to that because I absolutely I've taken a whole year to study um, uh, integrative nutrition for pelvic health because I've realised that through my Foo Foo Fun Club, I know it seems like it's all pink and ha ha, but we're doing deep, deep work that the nutrition is a massive part of it. So for me, these are, this is a summary of, uh, and we've already done the stand like a pregnant woman. Woman, but I would generally. Uh, so when I was palpating Anna, I'm just literally going to these hot spots, and usually they are they are true, and I work through those hot spots using all those strategies that I uh, talked about before. And then just, uh, it's too much to, to go into these, but when I, uh, my map of the world is very much influenced by Thomas Myers and his my fashion lines. And just incidentally, one of the things that I do do a lot of, and I teach at uh, Susan's College, is a uh, recovery for c <coughs> uh, for clients that have, re uh, that report with pain after having a C-section. And it's always like, oh, my star is killing me. Okay, so I have to tell you that on many occasions, you know, thank God for this, uh, for this map of the world, of the body, for many occasions I'm working, I work on the forefoot, tibia, on this anterior, rectus femoris, shazam, pain gone. I haven't even touched that scar. I haven't even touched it. Or I'm working on ribs, the intercostals, okay, elevated ribs, um, and, and um, ribs with, that have been flared, been, uh, causing a tension in the abdominal wall that is then dragging upwards on the scar. Boom. Little intercostal work, gone. The pain is gone for them. 
So um, I'll definitely be looking at those. Okay, so this is um, about uh, working in an integrated way, and this is a very uh, a long slide, but here is Kegels, and here, this is what the pelvic floor looks like. So this is a squeeze and lift, squeeze and lift, squeeze and lift, just doing kegels. Here is what the pelvic floor is, my pelvic floor looked like when I was just doing a lateral, um, lateral tilt and return with a viper. And that is an example of how the integrated system with, for the postnatal client, we need to talk about getting the whole system pain free and moving in an integrated way rather than just getting into skinny jeans. Just very quickly, these two clients, these are pain. These are postnatal clients with pain. This first client here, Rebecca, this is her baby, right? She, her child is four. Massive back pain, you can see that increased number of doses. Uh, lots of pain issues going on, but the most is blooming back pain and a leaky pelvic floor. Pelvic floor does not work well when it's in this anterior tilt. Okay, what was the problem? Her breathing was completely off. She used to have panic attacks. Um, she went to the doctors before, before she had the baby. They told her to do this real uh, belly breathing. So after she had the baby, she continued with it. So her abdominal wall never ever healed. Four years on with a massive diastasis, a leaky pelvic floor, massive back pain. Oh, I caught, uh, there were other things that we did. Mostly, she just got her to breathe better. And unlock the QLs unlocked those rectus femoris uh, uh, and, and just got her posture. She had a funny issue with her bowels. I got her to cut out and lots of the things that are irritating her. And guess what? There she was, at uh, you know only about a month later, there, able to wear the dress, the wedding dress that she wanted to wear. This lady, her baby was eight, eight, uh, chronic hip pain when she was running. The C-section, she had uh, two C-sections, and literally, I just worked on uh, scar tissue after, <coughs> um, and never actually went to the real scar. Big work on her pubic mound, big, big work here on hip flexors, and then right around the hoop of her hip. And in one session, she got rid of the pain that caused her, <coughs> you know, the trouble that she'd had for eight years. So I have, I very, very quickly, I have showed you um, or helped to shine a little light on that, the fact that when, so the post-pregnant client, actually their pain issues are fairly simple, easy peasy. The postnatal client, their pain issues, uh, external, extrinsic pain issues, might be being caused by a lack of the local control, both abdominal wall, pelvic floor, and then the postural hangover. And so it's very, for me a very exciting subject area. You know, I'm never bored of it, never tired, because it's all, it's like you have to be such a little detective with these girls. There we are. So if you want to become an anti postnatal natal, not natat, badass, then I have some, um, some vouchers and, um, and connect with me on Facebook. And then we are friends, okay. So uh, the, the rest of you connect to me on Facebook. I am a prolific poster. <laughs> <coughs>